Okay, let us discuss problem number 2.10. So let me first make the diagram for this problem. So we have a diagram here. So This goes downward. And there is a piston on the top. And there is a piston in the bottom. And these two pistons are connected by a light rigid rod. We will discuss. And the upside pressure is P0. Downside also pressure is P0. This contains RDL gas. So gas is RDL. Now let me read the question. A smooth vertical tube having two different sections is open from both it. So this is a smooth tube and having two sections. So this tube is a smooth. So you can say this is a smooth tube. Are you getting? So this tube is a smooth. Open from both it to the atmosphere. So both sides of your pressure is P0. Two piston in different area. Each piston slides within the respective tube section. So this piston can slide in this tube, and this piston can slide in this tube. So piston can slide in tubes without friction. So no friction. So in this piston, and this friction is zero. That is given to you. The cross-sectional area of upper piston is delta S greater than the lower one. So let us say the lower one has a S1, and the upper one has cross section area s2 and this is given s2 minus s1 is uh, delta s the cross section area of the upper piston is delta s greater than that of the lower one so this is s2 minus s1 s2 minus s1 delta s this is given are you getting now question says the combined mass of the two piston is equals to m so piston 1 has mass m1 and let us say piston 2 has mass m2 and the combined mass is given so let us say m is given m1 plus m2 so this value is given m is given to you how many kelvin the temperature of the gas between the piston should be heated so that the piston should shift L distance up so now question says, if I heat these gases, if I give some heat so that the temperature will increase and once the temperature increases, this piston shifts up. Why this piston will shift up? Because you see if you give heat, if this temperature inside this increases, so if temperature increases, pressure will increase. Once pressure increases, so pressure will apply a force upward this pressure will also apply a force downward the pressure will apply a force upward more and downward less because the area is more on the top so this means the piston will move up so it says what should be the temperature rise that is what should be the delta t we have to find out delta t so that piston will move by a distance l so this is the movement of piston movement of piston is by l are you getting? So how will you do this problem? So let us think slightly and then we will discuss. It is also given inside this you have the number of mole of gases that inside this is n is equals to 1 mole. So one more thing is given. Number of mole of gases inside this tube is 1 mole. And also gives each piston slides within the respective tube of the section. One mole of ideal gas enclosed between this piston tied with non-stretchable thread. So this is a thread basically and non-stretchable. So this is connected by a non-stretchable thread. 
are you getting so this is a thread you can see so we will have some tension inside this thread are you getting so let us see how will you proceed this one you have to find delta t Gases follow RDL gas law, so I can now write PV is equals to nRT. If I differentiate this one, so I will have PDV. Let us write in terms of delta V plus VDP is equals to number of mole of gas remains constant, so there is no leakage of gas. So n is constant, r is constant, and I want to increase the temperature by delta T. So temperature increment is delta T. You have so nR delta T. So you see, in this case, I know one thing. Delta T, I know. That is given in the question that we want delta T. I know also delta V. This can I calculate easily. And I have to calculate delta V also. So let us try to use this fact and see how we can do this one. I think this equation is not going to help me a lot. So let us leave this idea. Let us do something different. If I see the equilibrium of this system, let us try to find initial pressure inside this vessel. So let us calculate pressure inside the vessel. So what is the pressure inside the vessel? So for that, I have to consider the equilibrium of these two piston. So let us say upper piston we have, and there is a thread. So this thread will basically pull this down by tension T. And if you see the lower piston. And there is a force upward. That is the tension T. Now inside pressure is P. <laughs> Let us say pressure inside is P. So I will have a force P into S1. This is S2 or S1. So top one is 2. So P into S2. Now here we will have a force downward P into S1. Here we will have also M1 into Z. Here also we will have M1 into Z. That is downward. And you will have one force from the outward pressure. Outward pressure is P naught, so you will have P naught into S two. This is the force, and from this side you will have another force, P naught into S one. Are you getting? So these are the forces that is acting on the two piston. Let us write the equilibrium of the top piston. I can write the downward force is T plus M one G. These are the downward force plus P not S two. This is the downward force. P not S two is downward force. This is equal to upward force. Upward force is simply P S two. Now let us consider the equilibrium of the lower piston. So the downward force you can see your copy yourself. So the lower forces are M one G. This is M two G. There should be M two G. For the lower piston, we will have downward force is M1 G plus P S1 is equal to upward force. Upward force is T plus P not S1. Are you getting? Let us try to add these two equation. If I add these two equation, T goes out. And what we will have? So we will have m1 plus m2 into z. I think we are able to see plus p not s2. So p not. Let us take p this side plus p p not. Let us take p not. So s2 minus s1. This should be equals to if I take p not p this side. So p s2 minus s1. Now m1 plus m2 is m that is given in the problem. So m g plus p not s2 minus s1 that is given delta s is equals to p delta s. So now I know p is nothing but p not m g by divided by delta s. So inside initial pressure is given by p not plus m g by delta s. So this is the inside pressure. Are you getting? Now, if you give some heat, the piston will move up. So let us see the movement of piston. So let us say 
initial situation is something I think all of you have copied this one initially your piston is something like this so this is the initial situation of piston so here you have one one piston here you have another piston now if you give some heat piston will move up by distance L1 L so let us say this piston is now here and this piston is now here so basically piston has moved by a distance L up so you can say uh, this distance is L once again this distance is L so this distance is L and this distance is also L so that is the distance moved by the piston now initial temperature let us say is T and now temperature is increased by delta C so you have temperature is T plus delta T I can apply PV is equals to NRT again so let us say initial volume what is the volume initial so let us say initial volume is V what will be the now new volume new volume will be you see distance L has gone up so what is the change in volume so initial volume is V if it moves up by distance L area is S1 for this area is S2 so if simply this goes up by L distance so there is a decrease in volume by S1 L if this goes up by distance L there is an increase in volume by S2 into L so I can say there is an increase in volume increase in volume by S2 into L and there is a decrease in volume by S1 into L are you getting so this is increase this in decrease so what is the total change in volume S2 minus S1 into L I think all of you are able to understand this is nothing but delta S into L so what is the final volume final volume is V plus delta S into L so now here you have volume V plus delta S into L I think all of you are able to understand so this is if this goes up this will decrease the volume if this goes up this will increase the volume so increase is S2 into L decrease in S1 into L so total change or total increase you can say delta S into L now let us apply PV is equals to NRT so number of mole remains constant so I can say now see the pressure we have found initial pressure that is P0 plus mg by delta S this is the inside pressure so this is the inside pressure now this pressure is only function of P0 mg by delta S are you getting this is the important point here we have so this means the pressure inside this vessel will always remain same why this is happening because if you give some heat if you heat this one pressure soon increases and if the pressure increases this system wants to reduce the pressure and that's why the, this system moves up so finally the pressure becomes the same that's the initial pressure so if you give heat this piston moves up and the pressure remains as the initial pressure because the out force is always constant mg is always constant so the force from the inside has to be constant you see from here itself the pressure inside is only a function of p0 and mg and delta s so as long as p0 is not going to change in mg is not going to change p inside will remain same so even in the final situation even in this situation you see inside pressure will remain same as the initial pressure so i can say P final it will also be same and that value is basically P naught plus mg by delta s and now I can apply RDL gas law now things are very simple PV is equals to NRT so P naught plus mg by delta s so this is P and volume I have already calculated V plus delta s into L is equals to NRT n is given in the question that is 1 mole of gas r into t plus delta t are you getting so this is the final temperature are 
are getting and if I write initial situation initial so this is the let us say equation number one if I write ideal gas law initially so initial pressure is same P naught plus mg by delta S and initial volume was V is equal to number of mole was 1 R and temperature was T this is equation number 2 now if I subtract these two equations I think all of you are able to understand now if I subtract these two equations we will have P naught plus mg by delta S into delta S into L this will be equals to R into delta T so from here I can calculate delta T so delta T is nothing but P naught plus mg by delta S and this is delta S L by R are getting I think all of you are able to understand Now what are the important point we have in this question is one very good important point we have that the pressure inside the vessel will remain constant even if you are heating the system initially the pressure of the system will increase inside pressure will increase but this is kept in a frictionless so cylinder is frictionless so the system will move up so that the pressure decreases finally so if you are heating slowly this system will move slowly and the pressure final will remain same as the initial pressure this is one important point another important point we have finding pressure inside this system so if I want to find pressure inside if I want to find what is the pressure inside I have to consider the equilibrium of this system that is this piston this thread and this piston I have to write free body diagram to find out the inside pressure that is another important point so if I want to and if I am interested in inside pressure I have to write down the free body diagram and then I can find pressure inside so in its inside pressure I can directly find from Newton's law there is no need to apply the ideal gas equation this is the another important point we have in this question now the third important point something related to finding delta V what is the change in volume if this system moves up so I can say if this system moves up by distance L so if simply this piston moves up by distance L you see there is a reduction in volume by L into delta L into S1 now if this system this piston only moves by distance up by L there is an increase in volume S into S2 into L now if both move simultaneously so this will decrease the volume this will increase the volume so this is S2 minus S1 into L is the change in volume that is the one important point we have finally I can say I can apply ideal gas equation in initial situation so this I have applied ideal gas initially and this I can apply ideal gas equation finally and if I subtract these two equation the desired result we will get are you getting so this is all about this problem we will discuss the next problem I think all of you have copied this one this is a pretty good problem 